To make your filament extruder, first print the frame and gears for the Archipelago PET filament extruder. You can find the files on the Archipelago website. I recommend 50% or more infill for the gears and the left frame section. Other printed parts can be printed at 20% infill. Cut the two wooden boards to size. Buy or find the rest of the parts. Redrill the 0.4 millimeter hole in the extruder nozzles to be 1.75 millimeters. Grind a cone-shaped cavity into the heating block while still leaving threads so that the filament nozzle can attach to it, and then fit the sensor and heating resistor into the block. With all these pieces at hand, you can begin your assembly. Start by drilling pilot holes on each board where you will need to screw the extruder frame sections and the faceplate to the boards. Screw the bottom of the central frame section to the larger board. Screw the right frame section to the larger board. Slide the smaller board into the groove of the right frame and screw it into place. Now screw the central frame to the smaller board. Fit the left frame section onto the boards and screw them together. Slide the 12 volt power supply into the space between the central and right extruder frame sections and attach it to the larger board. Slide the gear motor partially into the space provided for it so that the motor shaft barely pokes through the hole in the central frame. Place the pinion gear between the left and central frame sections. Slide it onto the shaft of the motor, pressing the two together so that the motor slides into the central frame. They should all fit snugly. Place the big bobbin gear into the frame so that it aligns with the pinion gear. Place the threaded rod through the hole in the frame and through the big bobbin gear. Secure the big bobbin gear in place with a washer and two hex nuts on either side so that it's snug but will be able to move freely when the motor is running. Slide the support arm onto the motor and threaded rod. This will keep the two parallel while the filament extruder is running. Separate two piles of washers and screw the right angle to the top board while using the two piles of washers to insulate and isolate the wood from the right angle. Slide the filament nozzle through the lower hole in the right angle and screw the heating block onto it so that the three pieces are secure. Slide the thermal controller into the faceplate. Slide the PWM tensiometer through the faceplate from behind and attach the plastic knot. Use hot glue to secure it to the faceplate if necessary. Push the switch through the remaining opening in the faceplate. Using a 110-220 volt power cable, strip off some of the plastic insulation so that 20 centimeters of the three wires are exposed. Connect the ground yellow-green wire to the power supply port that is marked as ground. Connect one of the other wires to one of the power supply's 110-220 volt input ports. Cut the remaining wire about halfway, connecting the two halves to the two connectors of the switch, and then connect the remaining end to the last of the power supply's 110 220 volt input ports. Check to see if it turns on, and then turn it off again. Wire the motor to the PWM and the PWM to the one positive and one negative 12 volt port of the power supply. Turn on the power supply, and then turn on the PWM to check to see if the motor is working, and then turn everything off. Wire the thermal controller's positive and negative ports to the same positive and negative ports being used by the PWM. Turn on the power supply to check to see if the thermal controller is working. It should show an error message. Connect one wire from the thermistor to the thermal controller's port marked relay, the other wire from the thermistor to one of the remaining two 12 volt output ports on the power supply, and then a final wire to connect the final port of the relay on the thermal controller to the final output port on the power supply. Connect the two wires coming from the temperature sensor to the two remaining ports on the thermal controller. Test to see that all of the electronics are working properly before tying all of the wires together into the extruder frame and then screwing the faceplate onto the boards. Turn on the power supply and the PWM to make sure the motor is turning the correct way. If looking from the left side of the filament extruder, the big gear bobbin should be spinning clockwise so that the filament will be pulled to the back of the machine before being pulled down and then towards the interior. You can now screw one or two of the PET strip guides onto the top of the Archipelago filament extruder. These are not necessary, but may help to direct the flow of PET material through the heating block.
Lastly, bend the right angle bracket so that the angle becomes larger and the brass nozzle points towards the uppermost point of the bobbin. Test your archipelago filament extruder to make sure all parts are working together properly.